Oh, how's it going? Uh, I just got back from the Together for the Gospel Conference uh, in, whoo, in Louisville, Kentucky. And these are all the free books I got right here. <sighs> yep, I would say, I don't know, 20, 30 pounds of books. So I got these all for free. When you walk in, there's something called the Zero Dollar Bookstore. And you just grab books and there's a new book um, each. Ugh. I better set these down. Hold on. Ugh. Ugh. So there's a new book. Every time you walk in to the auditorium for a new session, and they're all free, and they're usually written by the people giving the talk, but sometimes not, and it's awesome. Lots and lots of free books. So it's the Together for the Gospel Conference in Louisville, Kentucky, Louisville, Louisville, L Louis Louisville. If you're from there, let me know what it is. I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, but it was great. It was a good conference. We actually had to leave early. It's actually still going on right now as we speak which is Friday at 2 o'clock. I just got back. We had to leave early because Vinny had to do something with a rental property or something. I don't know. But it was great. I uh, got to hear all kinds of people speak. David Platt gave an awesome, awesome talk on uh, race and the church, which is, of course, a very difficult subject to talk about, and he did it very, very well. So you should go check that out. I think they have a live stream. Um, see if you can find that. It was really good. But there were all kinds of people there. David Platt, Matt Chandler, uh, I think John Piper was there. We didn't see him speak. It was a good conference, kind of like Comic-Con for theology nerds, sort of. But uh, what I want to talk to you about today is just what was on my head right now, and that is uh, about congregational singing. I went to a, a session with Keith Getty, who, if you don't know who that is, he wrote In Christ Alone and helped write How Deep the Father's Love. He kind of writes modern hymns. And he was in a session talking about worship, and something that kept coming up over and over again was congregational singing. And it's something I plan on making a video about um, soon, so I'll just kind of talk about it now because it's in my brain because he talked about it. People kept asking him questions about worship and how to do worship and the specifics of worship, and he just kept going back to the point of it is all about congregational singing. Worship is about singing. Worship is about your congregation singing. The number one musical priority of worship, musical worship that is, is singing. So there's all kinds of things going on, right? People have big worship bands and you have a lot of tech going on. You have a lot of instruments going on. and You have all this stuff and it's all fine. There's nothing wrong with any of it. Well, there's nothing wrong with most of it. I don't know what you do in your church. But all of it has to point back to congregational singing. That is the point of all of it. It's kind of the reason why I'm not really into solos or long instrumentals during worship, because it's not the point. Um, unless they help with congregational singing, like maybe they're playing the melody of an unfamiliar uh, tune for your congregation, that's fine. But in general, solos just kind of deflect uh, from congregational singing. Am I saying that word enough, congregational singing? But that's what he kept going back to, and it was great. Um, because the point of worship, or the point of musical worship in your congregation is so that the people can sing. And I know there's other things like, I don't know, maybe solos in, in special services or m instrumentals under like prayers or meditations or silent areas. I understand it's not a black and white issue. There's a lot going on, and there are always exceptions to the rule. The point is just that if you're not creating your music in worship, if you're not, if, if when you're creating all of the musical parts of worship, your first thought isn't that, does this help the congregation sing? Then you've gone off the path somewhere and you need to get back. You need to just think. And this is when we're talking about music. There are other things that can supersede music like the theology of what's being sung and things like that. But when we're speaking about just the musical parts of worship, it is the singing of the people that matters. That is the point. Just throwing that out there, vlog style. I've never done a vlog style video, so sorry if I'm rambling, but oh well, I just came back from conference, right? This is what happens when you come back from conferences. You're all excited about things. I'll be ideal idealistic right now after the conference. Your congregation should be singing, and if you're a musical worship leader, that's what you should be focusing on, congregational singing. Just as kind of a, 
I don't know, illustration of that, I'd like to leave you with a video of the worship during the large sessions in the conference. Uh, there was about 12,000 people. I understand most of us don't have 12,000 people in our church, so it's not going to look like this. But worship was great because there was only a piano and singing. And in fact, in this video, there wasn't even a piano. It was just singing. And it's awesome. And it's all that really matters, to be honest with you, when it comes to musical worship. So here it is. This is uh, the T4G conference singing Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy.